able to afford to purchase one of those condos. And I work and live in the neighborhood. And they re these condos re reflect a trickle of developments being approved and being passed through the planning department that are fundamentally changing the economic nature of our neighborhood. What is the env environmental impact on the neighborhood? I can't tell you, but I can tell you that the planning department has not done a sufficient job in analyzing it. One thing that I see that, the, that is obvious in the negative declaration is that the planning department is stating that day laborers, the impact on day laborers is that they can move. I can tell you they didn't ask day laborers how this development would impact them. Thank you. Good evening to the board. Laura Guzman, Mission Neighborhood Resource Center. I'm also a member of the Local Homeless Board. I'm really appealing tonight, like most of us, to your leadership. And I believe that this board has shown leadership. Um, as the director of a drop-in center in the mission, I cannot tell you that stopping and or rather appealing this, how important it is for us to appeal and for you to take a look at this project because in the mission we are we have a tremendous dearth of housing period, affordable housing in general. We see every day we see calls of 85, 88 year old Latinas that are put on the street. We're seeing families being kicked out on the street because the houses are being sold at a rate and therefore they cannot afford rent for their families anymore. We get these calls every single day. Right now we're working with five elderly, which we don't have a place to put them in the Mission District. So from the point of view of a local homeless board member and looking at our, our plans, from the point of view of a you know, frontline worker, I need you to urge you to really consider, consider the appeal and really look at the impact. With respect to day laborers, they're one of the most at risk populations of our city. We see day laborers at the drop in every day. We cannot meet the need. I've come here many times to tell you how much more money or support we need. And I think this project could be critical to really expand the services we do in collaboration with the labor program. So again, because of your leadership, because of your smarts, I'm asking you to please consider this appeal. Thank you very much. Good evening, uh, good, good evening, Supervisors. My name is Elizabeth Alexander, and I work for La Voz Latino, which is a project based in the Tenderloin, and I'm also a rank-and-file member of SEIU 1021. The Board of Supervisors must send this project back to the Planning Commission to demand a real economic impact review that considers the effects of gentrification and corporate chain stores. And we know that these both have large effects as families and working people are priced out of even rental housing. And as chain store ordinances exist all over this great city, for the protection of small businesses and community-based economy. This plan should also be evaluated alongside the community proposal put forth by the Mission anti Place Coalition and Bernal Heights CDC. I work with working families and immigrant families in the Tenderloin who live in studios and hotel rooms, many because the mission is too expensive. You talk about the need to improve schools, curb violence, and create a positive future for our youth. We don't need gang injunctions, we need housing. Poverty is increasing, violence is increasing. We know that these problems are intricately, intricately linked to instability in housing. Please send this back for a real EIR. Thank you. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Enrique Salgado. Soy jornalero de San Francisco, de The Level Program. Good evening. My name is Enrique Salgado. I'm a day laborer with a day labor program. También, como también soy representante de la alianza de la alianza primero de mayo que está integrada por la comunidad china, la comunidad afroamericana, la comunidad latina y otras razas de color, gente de color. I'm also representative of the, of the May 1st Coalition, which is, uh, um, integrates Chinese, African American, um, Latino, and other people of color. Y como tal, acabo de llegar también del Foro Social de Estados Unidos, el primer foro que se acaba de realizar en Atlanta, porque lo que queremos es un Estados Unidos diferente, que es posible, y yo digo también que es posible tener un San Francisco diferente. 
And I've just come back from the U.S. Social Forum, the first social forum in Atlanta, where we were, where we were saying that we need a different U.S. Where we, but, and that this is possible. We also need a different San Francisco, which is also possible. Voy a hablar solamente de testimonios y de hechos. En primer lugar le diré que cuando fui como representante del, de los jornaleros al Congreso de Estados Unidos a cabildear sobre los problemas que tenemos en la vivienda, en los impuestos y como inmigrantes, se me dio todo el apoyo y se me dijo de que los problemas de San Francisco de la vivienda se tenían que resolver en San Francisco. I'm here to talk about testimony and about, um, and about, basically about the facts. Um, when we went to represent as day laborers to the uh, U.S. Congress, um, when we went and talked about what's going on with housing, um, with the taxes as immigrants, they told us that the, um, that the, the problems in San Francisco had to be solved in San Francisco. Efectivamente, yo estuve, yo estuve viviendo en San Francisco. Comencé trabajando en San Francisco. Sigo trabajando en San Francisco, pero me he tenido que ir a vivir a Oakland. I was living in San Francisco. I was working in San Francisco. I continue to work in San Francisco, but I had to move to Oakland. La razón es obvia porque ustedes han escuchado los testimonios de que aquí la renta cada vez es más cara y en lugar de ser homeless Uno más de la lista, de la larga lista que hay aquí, preferí irme a rentar a Oakland. And you've heard the reasons, which are obvious, that the rent here is way too expensive. So instead of being another homeless, another in the long list of homeless of homeless homelessness, I preferred to go um, rent in Oakland. Cuando votamos por el alcalde de San Francisco, lo hicimos con la clara idea de su promesa de que iba a resolver el problema de los hombres, es decir, que iba a hacer viviendas accesibles. When we elected the mayor of San Francisco with the idea, with the promise that they were going to, he was going to solve the homeless problem in San Francisco. Um, <coughs> and that he was going to make affordable housing. Pero qué estamos escuchando, qué estamos viendo, los proyectos que he ido a denunciar al Foro Social de Estados Unidos es que nos están desplazando y, y sepan ustedes que tenemos todo el respaldo del pueblo de Estados Unidos que se reunió en Atlanta para que tengamos viviendas accesibles y en nombre de ellos también estoy aquí and then this project that is being um, approved. Just know that we have the backing of people this, of San Francisco. We went to the U.S. Social Forum. Um, we have the backing of people, of people of the United States on this struggle. Muchas gracias. Entonces, por favor, voten por las divinas más accesibles para que podamos right. volver a San Francisco y no construir más puentes para que se siga congestionando el tránsito acá. Excuse me, you, the buzzer is going off, you have to wrap it up. Okay, sorry, I'm just going to translate this last sentence. Um, so I encourage you to, to, to build more affordable housing in San Francisco and not put money towards more bridges to, to, in order to create more traffic. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Iris Biblowitz. I've lived in the Mission for more than 30 years. I live a few blocks from Cesar Chavez in Mission Street. I've been evicted twice. But I was lucky. This was before the dot-com boom, in the times when you could be evicted and find housing. Um, now that is no longer true. Uh, there have been as many evic evictions now as during the dot-com boom. So many people have been displaced. So many low-income people have been displaced. And ticks and condos are going up everywhere. In my even immediate neighborhood around the block, about 10 different apartments and flats have been converted into ticks, and um, so many uh, tenants have been evicted. I was trained as a nurse, I am a nurse, I can't afford, I'm a part-time nurse, I can't afford the affordable housing at the proposed site either. And um, I was trained to respond to the need, and I think this is also a good, a good way to respond to housing. Um, what is the need? Low-income people have many, many fewer choices than uh, people with higher incomes. That we know there's a housing crisis in the city, that's why so many people are here. This is an opportunity, an opportunity that I hope is not missed. I wish I could take you on a tour 
of all the people who've been evicted and of all the houses that have changed um, and become more high-end, high, high income in the mission. Um, it, it's, I know San Francisco is a sanctuary city. Um, maybe we should also extend that to a sanctuary city for low-income people so they're not displaced and kicked out. Feels like there's a real tsunami of market rate housing and many people being swept away. Um, thank you. Uh, also, there was someone named Carlos Villarreal, Executive Director of the National Lawyers Guild, lives at Bartlett Cesar Chavez, who also um, supports the MAC plan, but he had to leave. Thank you. Hello, fellow supervisors. Of, I'm Bruce Allison of Seniors Organizing Seniors, and 30% of 70% uh, voted for low-income housing for seniors and people with disability. This is not going their way. Even though there is a law, why don't you follow the law of the majority that says they want low-income housing? Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Marlon Mendieta. Um, I'm with Dolores Street Community Services. Um, and I, I do want to speak to the facts, um, as was requested by the Board of Supervisors. Fact, um, people's lives are being affected by this type of project. Fact, the Mission Anti-Displacement Coalition has been speaking about this for a decade. Fact, their claims have proven true by, by the, by, just by looking around the neighborhood you can see that impact. Fact, if the EIR does not consider these facts, then it's probably not valid and needs to be redone. I think there are many things that are not being considered right now. If this sounded like a good idea, then I think there's factors that still need to be considered in terms of the impact. Fact, the community, the people are part of the environment and they are being affected by this. And if the report does not show that, it needs to be redone, it is not valid. Um, fact, the developer themselves said they're offering 15% affordable units in this. That's the minimum they could offer on this. In schools, if you do the minimum to get by, you get a D minus. In work, if you do the minimum to get by, you get passed up for promotions and you're the first one to be cut. In political offices, if you're elected, if you do the bare minimum to get by, you get voted out of office. Um, and I'm not saying that to threaten anybody. I'm just saying that it is all our responsibilities to find a better project which the community deserves. We do not deserve a D minus project. We deserve a project that is A plus. So please send this research project back to the Planning Commission, have it redone, and study the true impact of this project. People's lives have been affected for years, and we need to stop this. Thank you. Good evening, Supervisors. My name is Terry Fry. I'm part of the San Francisco Tenants Union. The Tenderloin Housing Clinic, and also the Harvey Milk LGBT Democratic Club's Housing Caucus. I'm extremely concerned about the number of high-rise condominiums that are being approved to be built in my adopted city of 37 years. Where are the rest of us going to live? The bread and butter, the life's blood of this city. It's working class families, people of color, and the poor. I had to laugh when I saw a sign on the new $600,000 condos at Eddie and Fillmore, the Heritage. It says, live in the historic Fillmore Jazz District. I say, what historic Fillmore Jazz District? Thanks to redevelopment and Justin Herman, it no longer exists. Anything else that has come along since is not historic. What a farce. Now it seems that the Mission District is headed in the same direction. We must stop this building trend that ignores truly affordable housing for true San Franciscans. This is slowly turning into what has been jokingly called San Fernhattan, but it's not funny. The demographics are changing so much that I'm afraid that we are losing true San Francisco values, and the changes are not good for regular people. Please use the power that the voters have given you to send this project back to the planning department and examine a way to erect truly affordable housing at 3400 Cesar Chavez Street. Thank you. Oh, and P.S., Walgreens is the new Starbucks, you know. Thank you. Muy buenas tardes, res, res, respetable público y compañeros supervisores de jurado. Eh, me da gusto dar mi opinión uh, de lo que se trata de este plan. Eh, este plan se, no se trata de una política y tampoco se trata de negociar. 
Este es un plan para el desarrollo de la población. Y en el libro de leyes existe cuando un, cuando un pueblo quiere desarrollar, debe de, de acertar para qué, para el, para el beneficio, para el futuro de los, nuestros hijos. Este no se trata tampoco de divisionismo, porque no es, no es una política. Entonces, espero que, que se acertan este plan para el beneficio de nuestro desarrollo de San Francisco, porque este es un... San Francisco es un santuario. Este es mi punto para no... para dar permiso también a tiempo para que todos hablen, ¿no? Gracias. Este es mi punto de vista. Gracias. Respectable public and supervisors, um, it, it is my pleasure to give you my, my opinion about this plan. Um, this is not about politics. It's not about negotiating. It's about the, the development of a community. Um, when you're developing a community, when you want to develop a community, you want to develop for the future of our children. This is not about divisions. Um, I hope that you assert a project, or you, I'm sorry, that you assert development in San Francisco, um, the, the, and that you assert um, a sanctuary. This is my point, um, I wanna, and this is my point, so I want to give time for others to speak. Thank you. Good evening, supervisors. My name is Jill Schenker with the Day Labor Program Women's Collective and La Raza Centro Legal. Rather than focus my statements this evening on the negative impacts of the proposed Seven Hills project, I want to talk to you about the incredible opportunity that you have today if you support the appeal of the negative declaration. You have the opportunity tonight to help us make steps towards the city's priority of developing affordable housing for low-income families, as stated in the housing element and the city's general plan. You also have the opportunity to help us defend and to nurture the mission community. And for me, most inspiring of all, you have the opportunity to support a potential uh, alternative, a visionary project that would create low-income housing and a community worker center for the people who make this city run, the gardeners and carpenters, the house cleaners and child care providers, the restaurant workers and janitors. Our city depends on low-wage workers, many of whom live in the mission. They uphold, they are the foundation of our lives and economy. Yet, it's harder and harder for these workers to find a place to live in San Francisco. And what's amazing about the situation presented to you today is that these hardworking people have joined with established community organizations and, community, and a community developer to bring to you a proposal that would meet the needs of and enrich our community. What a gift. This is the height of democracy and community development. To have the people of a neighborhood come to you with a viable and vibrant community development plan. You have the opportunity to honor and support this community initiative that would support workers and families, domestic workers and day laborers, immigrants and people of color. This is a moment when you need to choose between business and profit interests and the interests of the mission community and a people's initiative. We have city government and environmental impact reports to mitigate business and profit interests so that the city is not completely and solely defined by these interests. I ask you to step up to your role today as elected officials to ensure that our city is a diverse city so that not only well-off, predominantly white people can live here to support the cultural, class, and racial diversity of our city. Please support the appeal for a negative declaration. Supervisors Michael Terrio, San Francisco Building and Construction Trades Council. Uh, with all due respect to my sister Connie Ford, for those of you who have not read the letter from the Labor Council, it does not project the Seven Hills proposal. It advocates on behalf of the uh, Vernal Heights Neighborhood Senate proposal. That may seem a fine distinction, but it is one that was pointed out in the debates at the Labor Council and I'm sure had an influence on a good many votes. Um, the Building Trades Council stands in support of the Seven Hills proposal. Uh, when the, I believe the developer at every stage of the entitlement process has fulfilled the city's requirements and in the case of the affordable housing uh, requirement has exceeded it. Uh, with regard to the environmental impact uh, of the project, uh, the developer has shown that the effect on traffic is negligible. Uh, the uh, pedestrian traffic that would uh, result from it is exactly in accord with what environmentalists in this town have advocated for a long while and that is development of high density housing on major traffic corridors. 
It displaces no existing jobs. It displaces no existing housing. It displaces no PDR. PDR was on that site long ago at a time when my father had his Dodge worked on there, but that's probably before the memory of many folks in this room. On the other hand, it does offer jobs at good wages and benefits in the short term through the developer's commitment to us to use our workers solely in construction of the project. And it does offer union jobs at good wages in the long term through the Walgreens on the site, which will employ workers from the United Food and Commercial Workers under a longstanding agreement with that union. When the developer came to us, therefore, in the middle of 2006 to seek our support for the project, we did not hesitate to give it. And I continue in that support. Bernal Heights Neighborhood Center came to us later in the year. I reaffirmed our support for the Seven Hills proposal at that time. But on the developer's assurance that he would entertain, or his representative's assurance that he would entertain any reasonable offer for the site, I committed to Bernal Heights Neighborhood Center to encourage ongoing dialogue with regard to the project. I do that now. That, however, should not serve as adequate reason to reject, to impose additional environmental impact reportings, which is, after all, what's under consideration here. Thank you. Good evening, Supervisors. I'm here as a member of the Community and Emission District. I am very concerned with the 3400 Cesar Chavez site and what it represents to our community. I grew up in Emission and have seen many negative changes with issues of affordable housing. As a graduate of SF State, I have had the opportunity to have Mr. Peskin and Mrs. Maxwell be speakers in my SF political class. They left a long impression to me regarding issues also concerning their districts. So I plead to you, Supervisors of San Francisco, to listen to our community and be part of a plan that would benefit our community, the plan that MAC with Bernal Heights Neighborhood Center has proposed. So we want you to support our appeal and make the community a better place for us. Thank you. Good afternoon. Dairo Romero, Community Organizer at MEDA and Mission Resident. I live just one block away on this project. And I ask you, Supervisors, to support MAD appeals to send back this project to the Planning Department because the Planning Department and the Planning Commission approved this project without considering the negative impacts in terms of the traffic at the most dangerous and one of the most dangerous intersections in the city, Mission and Cesar Chavez, and the displacement of the small business but another Walgreens, a corporate business that takes profits out of the community. Walgreens is not a pharmacy the way they are advertising Walgreens. They sell a wide variety of goods, including groceries, clothing, that compete with the small business. Additionally, the 24 hours Walgreens with 37 parking space will increase car traffic in detriment of pedestrian transit. What the small merchant want is increasing pedestrian traffic that encourage street flight, safety, and patronage of their business. This is a copy I gave to every one of the supervisors and I want to show again. This is how Walgreens look. And look how colorful is the small business. Look at this. And I don't know where is the supervisor Sandoval. Some small Latino small merchant still consider that he is the best advocate for the Latino small business. Please let Supervisor Sandoval is not here, but yeah, let him know that the Latino small merchant thinks that he is the best advocate. Supervisor, you had the power and the obligation to keep the city diverse and inclusive for working class families and small business. As a mission resident and community organizer, and I ask you to send back this project to the planning department. Don't let the corporate make the decision. You had the power to do. Madam Clerk, President Peskin, Supervisors, thank you for the opportunity to address you on this very important issue. I'm not going to repeat a lot of the things that have been said. I think that I understand that the focus of this discussion tonight is on CEQA, and I think that in terms of having a basis upon which to grant the appeal of this negative declaration, 
that the MAC letter that was submitted to this body more than meets that threshold. As that letter correctly points out, the planning department simply failed to do its job here. The analysis that they did and lack thereof leaves a lot to be desired. And they specifically need to look at the impact that market rate housing is having on this neighborhood. And anyone who knows this neighborhood will tell you that the mission has a lot of needs. The mission needs a lot of things. But two things that mission does not need are two things that this project gives it. It does not need another chain store, and it does not need more luxury housing. I know that CEQA is the focus here tonight, but the fact that CEQA is the focus doesn't mean that you have to only look at CEQA. There are things that you can consider, and I would say that you should consider as well the fact that there is a more fundamental question at stake here, and that's a question about who we are as a city. What kind of city are we in San Francisco? Are we the kind of city that still allows low-wage, working-class people to live in San Francisco? Our city was named after St. Francis, who gave his life to the poor. Living in San Francisco should be a reality, a possibility for poor people. Being rich should not be a prerequisite to live in the city of St. Francis. Good evening, Supervisors. My name is Robert Erminger. I'm a member of the Inland Boatman's Union, the Marine Division of the ILWU, and also a delegate to the San Francisco Labor Council. I do want to reiterate what was stated earlier, that the San Francisco Labor Council at their last delegates meeting did endorse the MAC appeal. Also, I want to say I've lived for 17 years at Presida and Shotwell, Caddy Corner from St. Anthony's, about three blocks from the proposed development site. And the only reason I've been able to stay there is because of rent control in this city. And what has happened to me personally is that my building is being sold. And I'm lucky enough with a union job that I've been able to save enough money, I've been able to raid my 401k and borrow from family and friends to get enough of a down payment to get into my flat for about $300,000. And I can be damn well sure that none of those apartments that are going to be built at 3400 Mission by Seven Hills is going to be anywhere near $300,000. And I certainly, as a union member, as a person getting paid a somewhat decent wage in the city, would not be able to afford to live there, and I would be forced out of San Francisco. So I would really encourage very strongly the supervisors to take into account the vast majority of the testimony this evening, and please endorse the appeal and not make this decision for the Seven Hills. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ari Lev Fernari, and I live about two blocks from the proposed development at Mission and Presida. And every day I walk past where the development is going to be taking place on my way to BART. And every day, and everyone who lives in that neighborhood knows that that corner is crucial for the day laborers. You know, there's tons of day laborers waiting there, and every day I walk by and say hello, and I imagine, what if they had a building there? What if there was a place for them to organize and eat and to use the bathroom? And I strongly oppose the 3400 Seven Hills development because I think that corner should belong to the day laborers and should be a corner where there's an immigrant worker center. And in terms of the CEQA report, any report that doesn't show a negative environmental impact is insufficient. I strongly urge you to vote in favor of not only the appeal on this report, but also in favor of a community proposal that would actually take into account the needs of the neighborhood so that we can actually think what would be positive, not just is it negative enough to have this development, but what would be a positive statement that would actually support what happens and who lives and who works in that community. So thank you for your time. Good evening, Supervisors. I'm Tim Cullen with the San Francisco Housing Action Coalition, and on behalf of our 67 member organizations, we strongly endorse this project. It seems that the actual attributes of the project are almost the least important thing under discussion here. Recall that it's located in an NC district where housing is a permitted use. In addition, the developers made significant and costly concessions and improvements to the project at both our request and at the community's request, and these include increasing the inclusionary rate to 15 percent voluntarily and changing the bedroom mix to make it more friendly to families. The project is located in the immediate vicinity of both affordable and public housing projects and developments, and it is 
proposed to be built over a Walgreens. You can call it many things, but you can't call it luxury housing. As to affordability, this project cannot solve the city's desperate affordability crisis by itself, nor should it be asked to. It is, however, a small step in the right direction. We would ask, is 100% affordability the new standard for the mission? As to the question of whether the project complies with CEQA, we would say that the wrong question is being asked. We wonder what negative physical impacts to the environment can be caused by high-density urban infill on a major transit corridor. That's what this project is proposed, and my understanding is that modern urban environmental thought says this is an appropriate use of the land and is an appropriate project for the location. We would implore you to pay close heed and listen carefully to what the planning department staff has said about the issues at CEQA in discussion today. We think they have it exactly right, and they should be listened to. We believe that this hearing is possibly an inappropriate use of CEQA as its themes appear to have little to do with the environment. And recent examples of that are the bicycle plan, the housing element, and the urban infill. Next speaker, please. Thank you. I'd like to ask you not to clap because it takes us longer, and we have a lot of people to get through. So just for the interest of time and people paying attention, I would implore you not to do that. Thank you. Good evening, Supervisors. I live immediately adjacent to the project site and truly believe this development is much needed in this community. It addresses housing shortage of the city and will correct and rectify the blight that currently exists there. Please don't let special interest groups bully you into making the wrong decision. This development shouldn't be penalized because it can't answer all the city's problems. So please, I ask that you vote in favor of the Seven Hills Project. Good afternoon, Supervisors. My name is Alex Tom. I'm with the Chinese Progressive Association, and I'm also a resident of San Francisco. And you're not going to see a lot of Chinese speakers today, and I just wanted to make sure the message was clear that this is not just a mission issue. This is an issue that impacts all our communities, Latino, white, black, and Asian. This project represents another historical struggle in the city to tell developers that we deserve better. We deserve a holistic project that addresses all the needs. If people in Chinatown, Excelsior, the Mission do not stand up now, the same thing will continue to happen in all of our communities. Now to make this clear, we're not anti-development, anti-business. We are actually pro-development for the people. Pro-development that has true affordable housing, true economic development, and true support for the community. We work with a lot of workers that are working very hard to stay in the city, working 10 to 12 hours a day to serve and build San Francisco. It's time for the city to do the same. It's time for the developers to do the same and to work hard for the community. We can do better. San Francisco is a leader in fighting these policies, these gentrification and neoliberalism that is in, encroaching on our communities. And I just want to implore on you that the city cannot give up. This will be a domino effect on Chinatown, on other communities. And what we ask of you is that we need you to stand up for your constituency, not for Seven Hills. Stand up for your community, not for big business. And stand up for us and support this appeal and pass a project for the people. Thank you. Good evening, Supervisors. My name is Joe Pecora. I live in Bernal Heights. Um, several years ago, Mission Housing was in negotiation for that property. I believe it was about three years ago. We had heard that it was falling through because they had administration problems and it may not go through. We told the Bernal Heights Neighborhood Center that to watch this very carefully because the, proper, the property may become available. Then they did, they did nothing and here we are battling out another 
appeal. Uh, we, we've appealed Home Depot. We've appealed the uh, property, which is Kitty Corner from this. When Lucky Stores was going to move in, we fought with Vernal Heights Neighborhood Center to get that property and put up 55 affordable housings. Well, we're not, we're not going to do it anymore. That, these people have spent tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, already processing the architectural plans, doing all the work, and then they come in and they say, oh, you know, basically we screwed up. We didn't buy the property, so let's throw a monkey wrench into what they're doing so we can get the property. This is basically a land grab, and uh, it's apparent to me that it's a land grab. Thank you very much. My name is Michael Miller Quintana. Uh, I'm a member of the community. I've lived over 35 years from the intersection of Mission Street and Cesar Chavez, and I do support uh, the project. Uh, Seven Hills has worked with the community over and over and over again. They've taken our advice and changed things and worked with us. Uh, also, I'd like to add, today it's become, I didn't know this was going to happen this afternoon. Uh, I'm, personally, I'm Latino. Uh, I'm gay. I'm all these things that make me a real San Franciscan. And, and I support the project. Uh, you, you know, what they do on Bartlett now is sell crack. What they do on 26 now uh, is sell heroin and crack. And... You know, that place needs to be cleaned up. And we it, it's a wonderful project Seven Hills is proposing. Uh, they're not displacing anybody. They're not displacing any businesses. They're not displacing anybody's uh, residences. We need it. And I hope you vote that way. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Supervisors. My name is Rosabella Safant. I'm with Mission Economic Development Agency. I'm a native San Franciscan. I was born and raised in the Mission. And for most of my life, I have been connected to the Mission. And I work for an agency that seeks to provide assets for low-income families. And I'm here to ask for you to pay close attention to this issue. There have been people here who have been pouring their hearts out. These are true stories. These are the lives of people that you're affecting. There's an article in El Tecolote that says, who decides the future of the mission? Well, it isn't the residents of the mission. I've been to thousands and hours of public testimony at planning commission hearings. And we've been, at sea, we've been besieged for more than 10 years. And I would love to walk you through the mission to show you all of the high-end market rate housing that has been built. There is a cumulative impact to all of this development. There's all of these new developments being put out on Valencia Street. Where do you think the residents of this population, of this, of this district, are going to go? The mission is still 50% Latino. And the incomes of this population are so low that you can't even imagine. The per capita income is under $14,000. A family of three or four make less than $46,000. And while we have layered program upon program to get people into affordable housing, we can't do it. The number of BMR units is way too low for the thousands of people that apply for these units. Only 4% of Latinos have access BMR units. Do you think that that is the, the right strategy for us to take as a city? I, as a Latino woman, have felt invisible for my entire life in this city. But I continue to strive that somewhere in this city, we will have a voice, that you will hear us, and that you will do the right thing. This is an issue of social justice. Thank you, Rosabella. Next speaker, please. Good evening. My name is Hector Molina, and I've lived in the Mission District for, all, for my entire life. The 3400 Cedar Chavez, Chavez project will help many families accomplish the dream of living here in San Francisco. Families that can't afford the average, the average um, price of homes here in San Francisco, and families that can. Also, there are more people moving out than moving into San Francisco. If you rent the homes, most of the people that rent homes usually buy the home. 
was usually end up buying a home. But that doesn't mean that they're going to buy homes in San Francisco. So thank you, and um, yeah. <laughs> thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. Good evening, supervisors. My name is Lana Alviar, and I was born and raised in the intermission, and I have lived there continuously for 40 years, nearly 40 years. Um, you know, I'm standing here today, and I'm listening, and I hear the word displacement and gentrification, and I feel like those words just keep on getting thrown out to bring about divisiveness and fear and discrimination in our community, and in our community is, is diverse. It has always been diverse. I grew up there. African Americans, Asian, white, Latinos were always my neighbors. Low income, middle income were my neighbors. Today they still are my neighbors. I'm here in support of the proposed project at 3400 Cesar Chavez and ask you to vote against the appeal. Some people are constantly putting down this project that is not needed in our neighborhood. Well, I know many families in their 30s, young people who have lived there in their entire lives in the mission with their parents or extended family, not by choice or convenience, but but by, by by necessity to save money to purchase a home. So finally, after years of scrimping, saving, and sacrificing, an opportunity comes along where they may be able to purchase a home in their own neighborhood that they grew up, and some people are trying to stop it. These lifelong residents have the finances to put down sizable down payments on a home and would prefer to stay in the mission. I ask that you take into consideration that all types of housing are needed in the city and that this, first of all, this site is not for sale, nor does the appellant have the finances to purchase this land or the finances to begin and complete the alternative plan and a vote in favor of the appeal will only ensure no homes for anyone and the preservation of a blighted empty lot. Thank you. Good evening, superiors. Oh, my name Ma is Ma'am, if you just would pull that microphone down, perfect. Okay. Good evening, super supervisors. My name is Anita Leva, and, the, and I think this is a good project. There will be jobs and community space. It will clean up the area and make it safe. Support 3400 Cesar Chavez st Street and vote against the appeal. Please, um, I hope you guys help us out by getting the... Go ahead, take your time. <laughs> By um, making the right choice for um, accepting and doing the project for the people that, <laughs> that don't have enough money, and I hope you guys take the right choice. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, my name is Melissa Negrete, and I am from the mission. I hope the 3400 Cesar Chavez projects get built for some. People can buy a home in the neighborhood. I like that some of the units will be less expensive than the other ones, which will help people who don't have as much money to buy the regular price ones. It will also help the neighborhood by providing jobs and community space. Please support the project and vote against the appeal. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, good evening. My name is uh, Rosa Negrete. She's my daughter. Um, I'm here to support that project. And um, I'd rather be paying a mortgage than, and, than being paying rent for other people. And um, and I'm really happy that we're going to have a 24-hour Walgreens. Why not? A lot of people are going to have jobs there. So um, please uh, vote uh, in favor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Vicki Descalzo, and I'm a, a longtime resident, born and raised in San Francisco, and I am for the project. This project is right for this community. The issue of low-income housing is being addressed in the long-term mission plan and other plans that the Board of Supervisors will be and are currently addressing. This project has been in the work for, works for over two years, 
and the developer has been working with the community, making changes in order to fit the community and San Francisco's needs. Um, the units being offered here are within uh, the, the San Francisco uh, price range of 500K and um, they've made concessions of having more than the normal percentage of, uh, of housing that is required by the city. The developers have gone through the planning process, done what this city need, says needs to be done to build a good project, and now it's being circumvented or the attempt is being circumvented to build something that has gone through the normal process that this city demands. There are over 340 affordable units currently on Cesar Chavez. Um, community services are already in existence. For example, Salvation Army and several churches that offer community services. MEPI, the Mission Education Project that concentrates especially on Latino children is, give, is being given and paying for a space here along with the often repeated Walgreens. So there is an education project that currently pays extreme rent on 24th Street. Uh, several things have been said. Thank you. Vote for the project. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker, please. Good evening. My name is Robert Dinelli. I'm a native San Franciscan. My grandparents bought a place in the mission in the early 40s. I've lived in the mission for 35 years. Generally, I don't get involved in anything like this, but I find that this project seems to have real potential, and it's been in the works for a long time. I'd like to see it go through. I think it'd be an advantage to the community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. Good evening, Board of <clears throat> Good evening, Board of Supervisors. My name is John Joseph. I've lived and worked in San Francisco for 25 years. I've actively practiced law for 27 years, and my specialty is finance. I am also a small business owner. I own an art gallery on Bryant Street in San Francisco, and I support and only show the art of emerging artists. I'm scratching my head after listening to all these people tonight because they're all talking about serious problems. I think we all agree in this room that we have systemic problems in the United States, but that can't be solved by voting against this project. What we need to do is we need regime change in the United States. We need to get the Republicans out of office. We need to change the tax laws, and we need to support low and moderate housing for the people of San Francisco and elsewhere in California. But I'm scratching my head. There's only one proposal before you tonight, and that is the Seven Hills Project. There's no project before you for 100% low-income housing. And if you vote against this project, what we're going to have is an empty lot for another five or ten years. And we're going to have people standing on the corner, and I do support day laborers and their right to earn a living. But let's face it, I've lived in the neighborhood three blocks away for five years and interspersed amongst legitimate day laborers are hardcore drug dealers. I see drug transactions happen on a consistent basis day in and day out. I see people defecating on the property. I see rats and mice running around the property. And if you vote against this project, that is what you are leaving to the people in the mission. You are not doing us any good. Thank you for your comments, sir, um, and I appreciate your comments about regime change, and if the other speakers can try to keep their comments more on the California Environmental Quality Act, that sure would help the 11 members of this body. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, I'm Marta Fuente Alba Espinosa. I live in the Mission. I'm an artist. Uh, I am in favor of the Seven Hills Project on Cesar Chavez. Um, I'm tired of seeing a vacant, graffitied, garbage-strewn, crime-ridden lot at the Kelly Moore building. We could go on forever and ever about this perfect project that we're talking about that's right in my back pocket, but I don't really have a plan. 
every time something comes up, the opposition shoots it down. They can go on shooting down every good idea and never coming up with a project of their own. If the opposition wants more affordable housing, which I don't disagree that we need more of, although we need mixed housing, where is the plan? This isn't the only vacant spot in the mission. I don't see any other alternatives. I see no other proposals. Mr. Fan and his Slanted Door restaurant got shooed out of the neighborhood because they couldn't expand because what they were proposing wasn't perfect in the eyes of the opposition. And where was the proposal for a better alternative? We can talk about a better alternative forever and keep shooting down these pretty good plans. I'd like to see the development as it stands, or the proposal as it stands right now, and get moving on cleaning up that corner. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker, please. Good evening, supervisors. I'm here as a unionized employee of THC, but also as a former resident at 3403 Cesar Chavez. I live right above the comedy traffic school. I don't know if anybody ever went there. Um, so I'm here. Um, first, I really want to thank you. I know that you guys are want to talk about the CEQA and the legal stuff, and I will try to do that as much as I can as a layperson. God um, bless you. Yeah, great. Um, so, but before we talk about the CEQA, I really wanted to talk about the account Accountable Planning Initiative, which um, I guess in 86, the voters decided that before you actually do a CEQA, you should see if any building and construction uh, follows po uh, policy priorities. And I read through these eight priorities, and it's very clear this project just violates four of these things. The first one is discouragement of commuter vehicles by creating more and more parking and encouraging people who don't use muni and don't commute or don't value the importance of commuting and bicycles and uh, other forms of transit. Uh, that's really going to not be a good thing. Also, it says very clearly, preservation and enhancement of affordable housing. This is on page 19 of the negative declaration, by the way. Um, and to follow up with that issue, the actual negative declaration on page 18, the writer says that, this development would preclude the development of that site as a fully affordable housing project. And I think that that's something that 2660 also brought up, but I, but I still want to talk about this 86 proposal because I think that there's four reasons that we should look at this law as not being in congruence with this project. Now let's get to the CEQA, right? Because that's what you guys really want to talk about. Um, if you look at page 20 of the uh, proposal, it talks about land use and land planning. Uh, e B. It says, does this conflict with any applicable land use plans, policy, or regulation of any agency with jurisdiction over the project? Well, since 20, since the project on 24th Street basically asked to have cumulative impact reviews, I think that this would really clearly be a case of that. But the writer of this negative declaration says it has less than a significant impact. I think we really clearly can see here that this is a good basis of denying this and putting for an alternative plan. And I'm going to go, but. Uh, also, if you could take a look at page 32, I won't tell you what it says, but traffic, I used to live there. Don't ever cross there. 8 o'clock at night, horrible place across the street. It's going to be really bad for traffic. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for actually addressing what we are talking about, Mr. Vela. Great. Um, good evening, supervisors. My name is Mauricio Vela. I was born and raised in San Francisco in the, in the neighborhood right there where the project's being proposed. Um, I'm also a I'm Bruno Heights resident, the chair of Coleman Advocates, who supports affordable family housing, and um, a member of the Bruno Preschool Committee. And I first and foremost, want to thank you for your support for the preschool today. Um, just want to say a couple points. One, the draft Eastern Neighborhood Plan, you know, states that we should have 64% uh, affordable housing as we move forward, and and this the Seven Hills proposal does not create affordable family housing nine units out of 60 units and three, three bedrooms. Um, although it meets the inclusionary zoning requirements, doesn't make a, uh, a dent in the need to address the housing element. We, you know, we already have Walgreens. We have three Walgreens right in that vicinity, 30th, 23rd, uh, Monteagle building. Um, we've been fighting, you know, the traffic problem there is very dangerous, you know, it's, it's a hazard already, and this will just make the problem worse. Um, you know, I grew up in in in, in Noe Valley, um, and I've seen that the, the neighborhood change. We need affordable housing in order to keep the diversity and not just put lip service, but actually um, build housing. As Supervisor Daly said earlier in the day, it's one of our tools and one of our only tools to to keep our neighborhoods diverse. Um, 
is what we're under siege. We're, you know, we're losing housing for working folks and poor folks. We're losing our St. Luke's Hospital uh, to Sutter Health. We're dis our preschool's being displaced. It's just a, a, a combination of things that you as our leaders got to take a stand and help us fight back. Uh, please reject the neck deck. Um, please just don't give lip service to stopping displacement. We really need you to take action. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. Hi there. Um, my name is Edward Barron, and I'm here. Uh, I'm not supporting this, uh, this, this construction of this Walgreens and condominium. This, I, th I think this is really, really scary. Um, the thing about it is that everyone's talking about like how will this impact the the environment. I think that the people are the environment. I think that if, um, you know what eventually happens is that the 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 rates of rent increases dramatically. I mean, it, I can give you an example. For example, when I used to live in a Soma district before the uh, Pac Bell Park was uh, constructed. Um, Everything was happy-go-lucky until eventually you see a bunch of U-Haul trucks outside um, and your neighbors are just, you know, wandering around with their stuff and you ask them, so, you know, where are you guys moving out? We're moving to Oakland. And I'm like, why? Well, they jacked up the rent. Um, you know, this is, this, is, this is the kind of impact that happens. And I really believe that, you know, I respect people's American dream. I respect it a lot. You know, it's, it's really important to dream and believe that you can own your home. I believe in, um, you know, home ownership. But this isn't really affordable. This is like 500, 400 grand. You know, St. Regis is like 600 grand. You know, th this is really, really expensive stuff. I mean, San Francisco is a rich country, but there's a lot of poor. I mean, San Francisco is a rich city, but there's a lot of poor people who still are poor, who have no American dream, and eventually live with a ton of people in their little apartment buildings, like with 10 people or 12 people or whatever. And it's just, I mean, you know, I really think that we shouldn't support, you know, construction for Walgreens and condominium building. This, this isn't right. That's pretty much it. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Next speaker, please. Go ahead, sir. Good evening, Board of Supervisors. My name is Chris Chibish and is a member of the working middle class of the city, a voter, and a renter in the city. I have to say that I strongly support this project. It gives a person like myself the opportunity. I don't qualify for the mayor's low-income housing program, yet I still can't afford to buy a house in the city. I also am faced with the uh, possibility of having to leave the city and commute back to it to work. A project like this will give someone like me the opportunity to save up and buy a place in the city. Um, the, what they're trying to oppose here is adding more houses to the city. Economics is the more houses you have in the city, the price is going to come down. If you limit the number of houses you can build in the city, of course the price is going to go up and up, and you'll have no more middle class in San Francisco. You'll have the poor, and you'll have the rich, and no more middle class. So I strongly support this, and I look forward to hearing anything about the environmental impact report that was negative, because I've yet to really hear anything any valid arguments on it. So I strongly support it, and I hope you uh, turn down any opposition to it. Thank you. And you have yet to present us with any. Next speaker. Good evening. Uh, my name is Paul Vanderwell, and I live directly across the street from the 3400 Cesar Chavez lot. And I want to say that I wholeheartedly support the Seven Hills development, and I urge you to vote no on this appeal. Um, since the lot has been vacated, by Kelly Moore. There's been a huge increase in crime across the street. There's drug dealing on a daily basis. There's drinking. There's uh, a lot of disorderliness. It's to the point where myself and especially my mother, who's almost 65, are too scared to go out at night. And uh, it even goes further than that. The, the, the increase in crime has affected our building across the street. Um, in, since, the, since it's been vacated, we have been robbed six times, the building's been broken into, and I myself and one of my neighbors was actually almost the victims of a home invasion robbery. So we have definitely felt firsthand the increase in crime that's, that has occurred since Kelly Moore has left. And from what I've heard, the Seven Hills de uh, development is the only viable alternative on the table right now, which is why I support it. Um, I feel that with the uh, property developed that there's going to be an increase in foot traffic and it's going to
drive off that criminal element and bring a sense of community to the area and keep us safe. So I ask you to please consider the safety of myself and my neighbours and vote no on this appeal. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, supervisors. Thank you very much for listening to us. I'm sure you have had a long day with what everyone had to say. My name is Rita Alvear. I am a homeowner and a resident in the inner mission. I have been there for 48 years. I support this project, 34 Cesar Chavez, because it will offer on-site affordable unit and first-time home buyer assistance for the mission resident. This project also will give back to the community in other ways. Many jobs will be created for the future. Employees will come from the Mission Hiring Hall. Community space has been given to Mission Education Project, and as early sp a person has spoke, the rent we pay is very high, and we are working with Latino kids in the mission, and I think that has helped us with all the gang activities. I'm sure everyone knows about that, so we are trying to help the kids, and they will be helping us. Also, and the, our program is an after-school tutoring, and also um, Presida I will benefit from this project because Presida I will be doing the mural on the building, and I think we need some culture in our community. And it is the first time that a private developer has met with a neighbor group nonprofit, small business, and resident to ask for input. In my 47 years, I have never, never had a developer to ask my agency or ask inv individual or my group that I belong to to come and sit and have <clears throat> meeting to talk about a project. So I'm asking members of the Board of Supervisors, please support this project and vote against the appeal. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker. Good evening, supervisors. My name is Roberta Gabino. I was born and raised in the mission, single mom of three, as well as a union carpenter. I know that project will provide a lot of union jobs for union carpenters and other tradespeople, which we need. They're getting very rare and far in between. Um, to, to secure it all the time. I've seen the income guidelines, and if given the opportunity, I would be able to afford one of those units. I am a Latina, I am a single mom, and I am middle class to lower class, so I can afford it, so I know other people can. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker. Good evening, uh, President uh, Peskin and uh, Supervisors. Uh, Jim Salinas, Sr., representing the Carpenters Union here in San Francisco. 125 years you're helping to build this city. It was my members that after the 1906 earthquake built over 5,600 earthquake shacks in order to house San Franciscans. So we've been making a difference here. Uh, since 2003, it's been my responsibility to work with the development community uh, because I believe that it affects both the black and the brown community. Uh, it's two things that we require or that we ask of the developers when we sit down with them. Yes, we want the jobs, we want them to be union, but at the end of the day, we're also after that housing. I see our members struggling every day, every day here to maintain a presence here in San Francisco. I'm an anomaly. It's no longer much like the carpenter that just left this podium. It's no longer the norm for uh, our people to be able to be born here and live here the remainder of their days. We struggle every day. So then we join forces with the folks that uh, build here in this city. But we ask them, much like I did on the Planning Commission, on the Planning Commission I always ask that they go back, pay homage and respect to the neighborhood and the community in which they were operating. It's no different now. I have about 300 to 400 members in the Mission District, another 400 in the Bayview Hunters Point. It's the black and the brown community that's affected every day. So we go there, we ask for these jobs. You make a difference when you support these. We believe the CEQA requirements have been met. This is a developer that's paid the, their respect and the homage to my community. 30 years ago, I coined the phrase, you can take the boy out of the mission, but you can never take the mission out of the boy. 
that uh, is my roots here. So I care about this community. I believe we're all saying the same thing in this room. We want housing for our people, but we've got to do that the right way. We can't have that affordable housing without these developers. Look at Armex, look at 15th and Mission. 25%, but it's not being built. Thank you, Supervisors. Sequence been met. Thank you. Good evening, Board of Supervisors. Thank you for your time. My name is Bradford Matten, and myself and my partner, John Chinchillo, live on the 3400 block at Cesar Chavez. Uh, we've been there for the last two years, no, three years. We saw the Steve, uh, the Kelly Mall store close down since the lock closed. Um, we're a part of the building that has been broken into on six separate occasions. Uh, the last time Chris? they entered into our apartment from uh, this, the roof when we were downstairs in the living room. Um, we believe that the main reason that this is happening is because there is no one living on that block. It's an empty block. There's no one there. There's no housing. There's, there's no commercial spaces. There's no businesses. So we are very much for this development. Um, Everyone's talking about the Walgreens tonight, but no one's mentioned the fact that there are smaller business spaces available as well, which will increase more local businesses in the mission, and just the fact that there are more families that will be able to live in the spaces, they'll be able to shop and support the local mission businesses as well. So once again, thanks for your time. We do support this, and we hope you oppose the appeal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. Thank you. Good evening, supervisors. My name is Francesca Pastine, and I live on 25th and Shotwell. I have for 14 years, and I am support of this in, of this project. I feel like the Tom Roker has been responsible and responsive to the community. Um, I feel like the issue is very polarizing, and I think um, the the attitude is that if you're for this project, that you're against affordable housing and you're against day laborers. But I think that's unfair. My concern is that that corner become a vitalized cor corner for the community. I was uh, several months ago mugged on 26th and Guerrero at 6 o'clock in the evening because there's no one there. There's no one, there's no reason to be there. So walking through that very often, that area feels very dangerous. And I am in support of shops on the bottom level with, community, with housing on the top. I think that is a really smart move for a neighborhood because it gives people a reason to be there, not just to live there. Um, and I would certainly um, be part of the pedestrian activity if there were a Walgreens there, because I would probably shop there. Um, so I am adding my vo uh, voice in support of this community. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Board of Supervisors. My name is Tom Mogensen, and I represent uh, Upper Noe Neighbors along with our president. Um, this is sort of a rare time. I've, I've spent over a decade fighting developments like this, and this time I'm standing before you saying, yes, this is a good development. Uh, and I think the 10 years or more that I've spent uh, fighting uh, developments of this manner, that the developers themselves have learned that they need to speak to the community, yeah. and this particular developer has done so. So uh, I am in complete support of this project. Thank you. Good evening, Supervisors. Uh, my name is Raimundo Anthony. I live at 1380 San Bruno Avenue. I am a uh, lifelong Democrat. I live at, uh, I'm a, I am an active voter, a gay Latino resident, and I very firmly believe in this development. I am opposed to the appeal. Uh, if you go to the, the top of the facts, if you walk down to the Kelly Moore Paint, uh, where it used to be at the corner now, there are homeless people and there are drug pushers. And you can see it. We can drive down there right now and you will see it happen. And people set track records. Organizations set track records. Look at the armory and look at some of the people who spoke about the improvements of the armory, what we have now no, there in that place. What you have right now is a development where people have worked with MEPI, where people have worked with residents and with local businesses to try to come up with something positive. If you look across the East Bay to the Spanish-speaking Unity Council and Arabella Martinez, it's a good model of where business 
and where community members work together to create something viable. Economic development is for Latinos as well. Economic development is not the evil of all things. I'm proud of the people who are opposed to this. I'm for it. I'm against the, I'm against the appeal. I'm for the development. But I'm proud of the people who are standing up for their community. But I'm not going to vilify them. I'll stand with them and I'll vote for them when I agree with them. But not on this one. I'm against the appeal and I support this development. I encourage you to allow those to proceed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Supervisors. My name is John Lira, and I live and work directly across from this empty lot. And I'm here to say that uh, I and my family do support the project and oppose the appeal. And just a, a few comments. I mean, why do we think that Latinos cannot benefit from economic development? ¿Por qué creen que los Latinos no merecemos casas? ¿Por qué creen que no podemos comprar nuestras casas? Home ownership is not just an American dream. It is also a Latino dream. Por el sueño americano no nomás es para los, los americanos, sino también para nosotros los latinos. Ser dueños es un valor bueno para nosotros. And a couple things with this, with this project, and I agree with a lot of what the opposing side have, has echoed, but I think it's not this project, not this lot, and not this developer. These are not luxury apartments. I don't know what they mean by luxury. We own and live across this lot, and we bought our own condo with a lot of sacrifice, and other members of our community also talked about it. So it's not luxury condos. We worked very hard to be able to buy that. And specifically on this developer, uh, Tom Roca, he has met with us. He's changed a lot of the plans for us. Someone, may, someone was making a joke that perhaps with the Walgreens, these jobs will end up with Latinos. Yes, that's exactly what we want. We want jobs at Walgreens for Latinos, especially in San Francisco. It is a decent wage. On that, and so, so um, you know, we don't want an empty lot, and we just want your support on this. And y como dice Piolín por la mañana, vinimos aquí a este país para triunfar. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Supervisors. I bring you greetings from the South Market Community Action Network, Jazzy Collins. Uh, when the appellate files. Uh, a declaration, negative declaration. That means they have found, the, the appellate have found something in the environmental impact report that has a negative standard on the uh, environment itself in that community. That means when high density buildings goes up, we go uh, a few blocks south, south of that area, you find that 101 freeway runs through there. And when winds change and come out of the southwest, that means pollution coming in that community. Therefore, when high density buildings go up, sun, wind, sun, and run, uh, rain runoff has an impact. It has a health impact. Therefore, I'm asking you to support the pellet and support the uh, negative impact declaration. I stand with you, stand before you. I hold right now a draft copy of the planning department draft environmental impact report. Now, they do not honor this thick document, which I have been reading for the last week and a half. Going through it with a fine tooth comb. And this is planning our city for the, until 2025. Now, if they're not honoring this, their own document, which they have published, what makes you think they're going to honor the sequel documents and be in compliance? This do not make any sense. With how many high-rise condos do one city need for a population that may, may or may not come? I'm watching condos being built all over my city that I love. But I cannot stand and say that I'm in support of more people coming to my city with more pollution and more cars. And when the LGBT community is slowly being phased out of our city. Thank you and vote your conscience, please. Vote in favor of the community and not in favor of the developer. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Collins. Next speaker, please, Mr. Mazzola. Good evening, Supervisors. Larry Mazzola, Jr. I represent the Plumbers Union Local 38. Local 38 would like to go on record in support of this project. Um, we feel the developers have done all their due diligence, uh, including CEQA, and we want to see this thing passed. Uh, thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you for your comments. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Supervisors. My name is Wendy Phillips. I'm a 14-year resident of the Mission in Bernal Heights. I've also been an affordable housing advocate and tenant organizer in the neighborhood for the last six years and have seen the tremendous need for affordable housing during that time. When the Board of Supervisors voted on 2660 Harrison 
in 2005, you recognized the need to examine the cumulative effect on housing affordability of all the market rate condo projects that have been approved in the neighborhood up to that time. I'm here to ask today that you maintain that position by also appealing the negative declaration on this project at 3400 Ch Cesar Chavez. Board President Peskin has asked that speakers focus on CEQA and how this project is not in compliance. And the attorney for the project sponsor has attempted to discredit the community's appeal with a claim that the appeal is not related to CEQA concerns. But after Sup Supervisor Amiano's questions, the city attorney confirmed that concerns related to compliance with city policies, including the general plan, which includes the housing element, indeed can be considered when determining whether a project is compliant with CEQA. As other speakers have said, the housing element sets goals for the development of, of affordable housing that far exceed what's currently required by the inclusionary housing ordinance. For the planning department to say that its measure of whether a project is helping to meet the goals of the housing element by whether it's meeting the, minima the minimum inclusionary requirements <laughs> is ridiculous. If the city expected its affordable housing goals to be met only through inclusionary requirements, we wouldn't need a mayor's office of housing or all the nonprofit housing developers who do help the city get closer to the housing element's goals. But we know that the city's affordable housing needs are not even close to being met through inclusionary housing requirements. And therefore, I'm asking you to support this appeal on the same basis on which you supported the appeal of 2660 Harrison, that we need to study the cumulative impact of market rate condo development before another single project is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you for staying on point and on topic. Um, good evening, um, supervisors. My name is Laura Melgarejo. I'm a student at San Francisco State, and I just want to support what my brothers and sisters already say. As a community resident in the Mission District, I know what it's like to live, play, and pray at the Mission. Um, so please don't tell me that my experience don't count. I know you ask for data, and I know you ask for facts. When do not relate our personal experience, and to come and talk to you and present to you um, the facts about why we support or we don't, or why do we support this project or don't, or, or we don't, or we do not support it. So data and statistics sometimes doesn't reflect my experience. That's why I'm here to tell you. I know what it's like to live. I know what it's like to work, and I know what it's like to to pray in the mission. Um, the community needs have been repeated over and over by a lot of my brothers and sisters. We, we are the experts in the community. We know what we need. Uh, please support the alternative project that will truly serve the community needs on, on this site because the truth is that as a law, as a um, low income families, we will not be able to afford to rent, a, to rent or even buy a unit in that uh, project. Please support the appeal. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Jimena Ávila. Tengo 17 años y estudio en la escuela John O'Connor High School. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jimena Ávila, and I am 17 years old, and I study at John O'Connell High School. Estoy aquí para apoyar a mi comunidad porque creo que otro proyecto es posible. I am here to support my community because I feel that another project is possible. En, alguna, en algunas de nuestras comunidades hay muchas personas de bajos recursos, en especial en el distrito de la misión. In our community, there are many people that are low income, that are, have low resources, especially in the district of the mission. Estas personas no tienen lo suficiente como para pagar un condominio. Por lo tanto, estas personas necesitan viviendas de bajos recursos y no condominios, ya que su sueldo no se los permite. These people don't have enough resources um, or um, to be able to pay a condominium, um, such as these people then need, um, then therefore we need um, low-income housing. Con su apoyo y dedicación, este proyecto puede ser posible. Just to finish what she said before, I'm sorry. Um, we need low-income housing and not condominiums, for, for our income does not permit it. Um, with your support and your dedication, another project could be possible. Imagínense que la César Chávez, la César Chávez pueda proveer viviendas de bajos de bajos ingresos a familia como la mía que ganamos menos de cinco, de 54 de 54 mil dólares y eso que tenemos dos trabajos. 
Imagine the Cesar Chavez could provide housing for low-income families like mine who, who earn under $54,000 a year, and that's and even with two jobs. Por favor, tomen, tomen la decisión correcta. La decisión está en sus manos. Apoyen a las familias de bajos ingresos y pequeños negocios. The decision, um, please take, please, um, please make the right decision. The decision is in your hands. Support fam low income families and small business in the mission. Este proyecto cumple con las necesidades críticas de viviendas de bajos recursos en vez de, es, de estar crean, creando 60 unidades de condominios, 30 de una recámara, 27 de dos recámaras y 3 unidades de tres recámaras. La mayoría de, la reside, de los residentes en el área alrededor del proyecto no podrían, no podrían pagar esto porque, son, porque no, le, no, los, no, lo, uh, no tienen los suficientes recursos. This project is, oh, sorry. The proposed project does not meet the crucial need for affordable family housing. Instead, it creates 60 condos, 31 bedroom units, 27 two bedroom units, and three three bedroom units. Most of the residents in the surrounding area would not be able to afford to live there. Gracias. Thank you. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Susana Zamora. Soy estudiante de Yono Conner High School. Good evening. My name is Susana Zamora. I am a student at Yono Conner High School. Tengo 17 años. Estoy aquí para ayudar a mi comunidad a tener más viviendas de bajos ingresos. I'm 17 years old and I'm here to tell you that we need more affordable housing in our community. Para las personas de bajos recursos. Yo pienso que no es justo hacer más condominios para gentes más ricas. I feel that our, our, um, com our community and our um, families need more affordable units. Por favor, apoyen este proyecto de la comunidad para que familias como la mía tengan la oportunidad de vivir en una comunidad. Please support our project so that families like my family and our families can have a decent home and live in the mission. Donde el salario mínimo no es suficiente para que familias puedan rentar un condominio. Where the minimum wage is not enough for families like my family to rent or even tr try to think to buy a condominium. El proyecto actual introduce la propiedad de ciudades en desarrollar viviendas para familias de bajos ingresos, como está detallado en el elemento de viviendas en el plan general de la ciudad. Gracias por su atención. The, propo the proposed project contradicts the city priorities of developing affordable housing for low-income families, as stated in, in the housing element and the city's general plan. Thank you for your attention. Hello everyone, um, my name is Marilyn Duran and I had written something but I kind of like it anymore so I'm going to start over. Um, my name is Marilyn Duran, I'm 17 years old. I attend Mercy High School and I'm, I work with Poder, I'm a youth organizer. And I come with you bearing trembling hands, a pounding heart and my passion and my opinion. Um, <sighs> sorry. Um, so um, I've been looking around the Mission District, my community, and I've noticed so many changes. And as these changes come, so many more new people. And um, there was a restaurant actually near my house, and it was called La Posta. And um, they told us that, you know, oh, we're going to build a condo, um, but it's okay because we're going to put, you know, the Posta at the bottom, so don't worry about it. It'll still be there. And they built a condo in No Posta. And um, they kicked my friends out of their house saying they were going to move their family in. And instead, you know, they sold them for half a million dollars. And um, right now they're trying to kick, they're trying to sell my house. And I'm praying that we don't get kicked out. <laughs> um, but if we do get kicked out, this project, this alternative project that we have where it's all affordable housing, if we get kicked out, we can move there. I love San Francisco. I don't want to leave. Um, so... It'd be, <laughs> sorry, um, it'd be awesome if they built, you know, this house so we could stay here in San Francisco. Um, 
And my mom, you know, she works so many jobs. She, I don't get to see her until like two in the morning, and sometimes I can't stay up that late. So, you know, um, and I'm sure there are a whole bunch of other families that experience this. So if we build this affordable housing, people like my mom who work until two, maybe she can come home early and spend time with me. And maybe other families can have that too. So please, you know, go for this alternative housing and support families such as mine. Thank you for your time. Cynthia Munoz, and I work um, for the summer at St. Peter's Housing Committee. And Ms. I've Williams, been there why don't you raise that microphone up? Oh, there yes. you go. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Um, my name is Cynthia Munoz, and I am at St. Peter's Housing Committee. And being there every day, you see the real necessity for affordable housing in the neighborhood, in the Mission District. Um, I think it's ridiculous to even consider uh, to have condominiums in there when people that live there can't afford them. But we already went over that, and everybody knows that. And um, a little bit about the neck deck. Um, on page 32, it says transportation and circulation cause an increase in traffic which is substantial in relation to the existing traffic local I mean load and capac capacity of the street system and blah 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 it says less than significant impact that is not true if you have 60 extra cars coming in and out every day you're gonna see a, an increase in traffic and it's gonna affect a really it's gonna have a real effect <clears throat> and a bad impact um, so we're talking about 15% affordable housing what is that gonna be a units we don't need only eight units in, in the mission. We need a lot of affordable housing, and I seriously disencourage this project. I think it's it's not good. I, I don't think it's going to help anything, and the mission district is not going to help the problems. And we need something that actually does. So I would um, I support the MAC project. There is another project. We don't want an empty lot, like a lot of. Um, folks have been saying that's not what we want. We have a project. We have a proposal. We have everything that that we need to act to have actual affordable housing for people. So please don't support this um, this project, um, Kelly Moore, and have more affordable housing for people, not just eight units. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Nunez. Next speaker, Ms. Ledbetter. Good afternoon, Supervisors. My name is Julie Ledbetter, and I'm a member of Save Valencia. It's a group of over 100 neighbors living on or near Valencia Street who oppose the increased luxury condo development on Valencia and in the Mission. And we support community development such as affordable housing, community parks, and community businesses. Right now, we are fighting three separate condo projects on one block alone between 18th and 19th. And through that work, I've learned a little bit about CEQA. CEQA. Hey, yeah. yeah. So, under CEQA, impacts on land use and land use planning are considered environmental impacts. That's what we're talking about here. And the question is asked directly in the NEG deck. It says, conf would the project conflict with any applicable land use plan policy or regulation of any agency adopted for the purpose of avoiding or mitigating environmental impact? The, if the answer is yes, and the conflict is significant and cannot be mitigated, then environmental review is required. As you know in the mission, we do not have a plan. We do not have a plan, and nobody's in agreement about what that plan will be. The Valencia Street Group just met with Johnny Jaramillo. He said every possibility for zoning and land use is still on the table in the mission. So, therefore, how does the planning department know that there will be no significant